Welcome back, everyone. We are back in the finals for the post Steam 1v1 0K tournament. And we don't have intermission music this time. I turned it off properly. We're good. We are good. We are getting to the yeah. finals of Zenfer and Kane. So this is one of the groups. There are, in fact, going to be five groups. And of those, it looks like it is Drone and Silencer are going at it. Zenfer and Kane going at it. Top McFash. Oh, McFash is going to the finals. Really good job. They were worried about not being streamed. And the rest of them haven't quite been sorted out yet. But we are doing Zenfer versus Kane. That is the group we have been following thus far. Because for a reminder, this tournament is split up into groups just to make it a bit easier for people who are, you know, lower LO. Don't want to have everyone going up against Drone and Golda. That'd just be kind of cruel. At least at this stage in the tournament. So, yeah, everyone's kind of split up. But Zenfer and Kane, they are the finals of their group. And this is... It's going to be quite exciting. This, so far, this group has produced a lot of very even matches. And I expect no less from this one here. This group is just, you know, it's the... the um the highest skilled group of mortals. Yes. Above this group, you have like God and whatever. But, but here you have people that um, like we normal people can aspire to be as good as. And this yeah. is why these games are both like, you can actually learn from them. You can see and say, hey, I can do this myself. Um, yeah, whereas with, with Goda and Drone, they're really good. It's just like, they're really, yeah. really good. <laughs> and that's it can be difficult to actually realize how to do what they do because what they do it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of really committed dedicated effort to learn how the game works and learn all the mechanics and that's that's a tricky thing to do so it's impressive that they can do it but it's mm -hmm. also really nice to see the players that could very well become those people in the next year or so exactly well here we are on titan duel and we have a tank mirror so now kodachis are going to annoy each other I'm going to guess that we're going to see a lot, a lot, a lot of blitzes. Like, huge amounts of blitzes. That's a fair guess. We do usually see a lot of blitzes when we're seeing tank factor, but then tank v tank. At the same time, we have the Kodachis and Welders early on, and I think it's with tank v tank, you don't necessarily have to build up as much in the way of early raiders, because your opponent isn't likely to either. So we could see a lot of blitzes, but we might also just see a switch over quite quickly to Minotaurs as soon as the economy gets up. With enough blitzes, uh, Minotaurs just die because they're uh, stun locked. Fair um, point. It's it's a matter of economy, to be honest, um, and economy of blitz and blitz balls. At least this is this may be the thing. Um, yeah, that that is the way things tend to work. And this point, it looks like the economy is overall fairly even. Kane managing a little bit of extra metal, but really not by much. So overall, it's going to come down more to raiding, and right now Kane's under a lot of pressure. They can't really push away Zen for his Kodachi, while at the same time Kane's Kodachi has been just hanging out in the center of the map, not managing to find a whole lot of metal extractors. It will be able to find one over to the top side here, but at the same time, that's that's all the pressure that Kane's been taking, and thus not really been able to expand to the metal extractors they'd like. And now Zen for able to take out Kane's Kodachi, forced to retreat themselves, but hey, that's done its job. Both players idled their constructors quite a bit because they're very, very focused on micro. Um, but look at the map. This is a macro map. This is yeah. like you must get the mexes. It's it's even like you can lose a mex. You can lose two mexes. Just get the weavers going. Um, and uh, the welder, sorry, not weaver. Yeah, that's get the welders factor. going yeah. and, and get all the mexes that you can. Get the corners. Like no, no Kodachi actually check the corners. You just send the welder there, there and, and start working out. I mean, this is actually kind of showing what I was talking about with Tank Factory earlier, where it's very difficult to send those units because you don't have very many of them. And that's the thing here, is that we aren't seeing a lot of Kodachis being... Like, we're saying the Kodachis being sent to the exact point where they know something's going to be, not necessarily the points they don't know, but there could be things. And now, Zenfer is finding a lot of value from that one Kodachi going around the back side of the map, but it's still just a matter of whether or not that is going to pile up and it looks like with the blitzes that they were building it might in fact do so both players are switching to blitz as you predicted Hokumoko <laughs> and Kane is blitzing as well yeah both both sides starting to blitz um, definitely Zenfer managed to raid much better um, but the expansion that you, you, you would expect that um, with better raiding, uh, they'll take the the initiative and expand more. But it doesn't seem to be the situation. 
Well, you say that, but at the same time, there is this welder over to the bottom left side of the map that is starting to set up in the center. Same one on the top, and there aren't very many welders, though. Mostly they're focused on just spending the money Zenfer has, because they are ahead by 10 mil per second, mm -hmm. so Zenfer is in a good spot right now. It's right. not exactly right, like they're right. in dire straits. So I, I do agree. I would like to see a bit more expansion coming out from them, but that seems to be exactly what they're doing. They're just trying to make sure that that expansion is not completely naked. Ooh, this very nice. Blitz lost, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Zenfer is doing a great job here just keeping the, their own army alive. And they're doing, like, small containment here. It's not, not very big, but it's just enough to... Um, to so just enough to keep their opponents in a bit of a if iffy yeah. position. They can't easily expand. I mean, this Welder is basically locked down on their base because all the Blitzes and Kodachis coming in here from Zenfer that Kane is trying to deal with, but unfortunately, they just don't have the numbers. They do, however, might, they might have a right. positioning on this bottom Blitz, but Zenfer, no, they're they're too keen for that. They're managing to find their way back and just make sure that Kane cannot do anything. <laughs> and oh, finally, Kane is starting to yeah northeast mix to remix their their mixes the back mixes. Oh yeah, that too, and that's something I always talk about. Like that that to me is the difference between a good player and a great player is a great player remixes. Like a great player remixes quickly. <laughs> That's the big thing. You can see a lot of players who are newer to the game, and one of the biggest things I see is that they'll build mexes and then they lose the mexes and then they never bother to go back and rebuild them. Like, I don't know if it's just fear of losing the mechs again or what, but no, if you can keep that mech alive for 30 seconds for a plus two mechs, it's paid for itself. So if there's any chance it'll stay alive for half a minute, rebuild that mechs. It's totally worth it. Even more so because a rebuild means you're reclaiming, so it only has to sp spend about 20 seconds. It's even better. But at this point, it's going to be a matter of whether or not that is going to stay up. And it looks like Kane does have the forces to ensure that it will. The Kodachi is stun locked away, so it's not going to be able to do all that much. But then again, at the same time, there's the Blitz from Zenfer. But again, not able to do as much. The fire from the Kodachi should probably not kill the Metal Extractor. Indeed, it does not. Barely surviving the mix on the front will go down to the Blitz. So some value has been found, but Kane overall is still able to hold their own. At least to an extent, losing two mechs in the process is not nothing. And the more, pro the more problematic thing is that they aren't really able to expand. Again, they've been pushed back with that pressure. Zenfer is expanding much better, yes. Uh, we, we can see that. Um, and also they're making a geothermal generator, so the, all their energy problems are going to be solved very soon. Um, yeah, because we are noticing Zenfer is accessing very slightly because of that. I mean, that and the fact that they only just are building the caretakers they need. But hey, that's fine. As long as they have the caretakers there, they're good. And they have the caretakers. They have 40 metal worth of caretakers. They just need the energy. And there it is. There's the Geoplant. Zenfer will be able to just completely have their army explode within the next two minutes. Just thanks to that geothermal generator. Although at this moment, Kane has a bigger army than Zenfer. Oh, that is a fair point. At this exact moment, yes. And they are getting an ogre as well to try to ensure that as best as they can. But at the same time, Zenfer does have the stronger economy, and now they have the production to back it up. That army advantage is not going to last for long. There's probably one fight that Kane will have where they will be on top. And once that fight is over, it's going to be Blitz City from Zenfer for the rest of the match. If not, then, it, I mean, Zenfer can just go with whatever because they have a massive metal advantage. Yeah, I think their the advantage is already lost. So this is now... Uh, entirely downhill, I think. Yeah, unless this ogre is able to get loads of value against the blitzes, and it might be able to do so. That is the key thing. Watch that ogre because, or th this ogre, that's a minotaur up there. The minotaur actually is going to have a bit of a tough time, but the ogre, keep an eye on this thing because if it's able to stop the blitzes and it's able to get the attrition back in Kane's favor, there is the opportunity for Kane to possibly harass from that and then from there actually be able to get some mileage onto Zenfer. But Zenfer is trying to make sure that that does not happen without some cost. They're going in with the, the Blitzes over to the Northeast, possibly to get rid of Kane's commander. I don't think they know it's there, but hey, it's going to be a pleasant surprise for them when they find it. But just with, you, you see, go to the factory of Zenfer. You can see that it's a Blitz every five seconds. It's like five yeah. seconds Blitz, five seconds Blitz, five seconds Blitz. It doesn't, <laughs> no Ogre is, is fast enough. Especially when it's being constructed at the moment, and Kane is finally getting that built up again, but Kane as well does not have quite as much build power. They are actually accessing quite a bit of their metal in the process, even having even before they lost it. 
Which is a shame because yeah. right now they're in a great position to reclaim. They can get some reclaim going and maybe get one of the welders on the factory, then they're going to be in a great spot to work with to actually set up a few ogres and maybe use that to get back in, but they really only have another minute or so. They need to do that within the next, but before the 10 minute mark. If they don't, they're not going to have the army value. Like you said, Hokomoko, those blitzes are being popped out like 20 per minute. And now there's an emissary just to, it's icing on top. Oh, that is going to be painful. That emissary is going to have no problems hitting the Minotaur or the Ogre. So there is, the window is rapidly closing for Kane to get back in this. And Kane does seem to realize this, but at the same time, they're trying to find ways by raiding. At this stage in the game, raiding is a little bit too little too late. But hey, the Ogre getting hit by the Blitz and not able to take it out. We need one more Ogre. The Ogre, however, its backup is not available, and that one Ogre will go down the Minotaur, trying to do his best, but this is the stun lock you were talking about, Hokomoko, and that stun lock means the Minotaur cannot do any damage, neither can the Ogre, and this is Enfer just pushing in here. Unfortunately, Kane's forces were not were not together enough to stop the Blitzes. If two or three Ogres were together, the Blitz army would have been gone, but as it stands, there is just a Blitz force and nothing to stop it. Kane throws in the towel, and that is going to be the finals of the Zen... Well, the group that Zen from Kane and the group of... Highly skilled mortals will go in favor of Zenfer. <laughs> Nicely done. And we've seen how tank versus tank battles go. This was very, very educational, I think. Yes, very much tanks and other tanks. Because that's... <laughs> I guess that's zero okay K now? I mean, I, I was joking about the welders. I was joking about them being overpowered. I was joking... Why do my jokes always seem to actually be real? Like, I realize honesty is a source of comedy, but it's a bit ridiculous at this point for me. <laughs> I keep saying things, and then it just keeps being true. It's like, I gotta be really careful what I joke about. You, you, you may want to change your job and be a prophet or something. Apparently. Maybe. Prophet comedian. Apparently. Prophet Although, comedian. Yeah. At this point, though, it looks like we do have a couple other matches from the other groups. I'm just going to jump over to the Chvan and What Potato Power match because that has just started. And that's another couple players who should be able to produce a quite interesting match. I will join the battle in a second. But yeah, I think it's, though, like Titan Duel. Like I'm I'm thinking like, Roe versus what you'd often see on that, but... I've found in my own experience, rovers have a bit of a tough time against heavy tanks these days. What do you think? Um, rovers have a lot of problems against tanks until they uh, make, uh, what's the name, dominatrix. Oh, yeah. Dominatrix yeah. is just ridiculous. It just, like, you have a Kodachi, I have a Kodachi. You have a Blitz, I have a Blitz. You have a, a Minotaur, just give me a few seconds and I have a Minotaur. It's, it's, insane if you don't make a dominatrix you will die if you do make a dominatrix well well that analysis aside though but i mean we do see cloaky instead we see the knights this is what i was talking about earlier shvan going for the knights against the tank factory which actually was working reasonably well especially now the ogres one set up shvan went for or white potato power went for the ogre right away did not want to be stuck in the glaive imp strategy but that's what the knights helped deal with of course at this point shvan is still behind an economy both players are accessing what potato power where is your power Seriously, their energy is like 13. <laughs> it's like, a, did you have in science class that you make a, um, a battery from potatoes or from lemons or oh, whatever? Oh, I didn't do that, but I have heard of it. I, I know about that experiment. Yeah. Yeah. So, Which so, I think, so, yeah, it's like, like, okay, you need more copper and zinc rods there, potato power, if you want to actually make that work. And more potatoes. And maybe just make them solar powered. And maybe just make them solar plants. They just make more solar <laughs> plants. That's the way to go. And they are, in fact, doing that right now. They have that well, they're on that just yeah please just and the commander get your economy. yes and the commander it's, too. It's yes just, you're right you know that why does everyone access so much metal because area max is so easy you just drag and if no one kills your constructor you will have more maxes but yeah you don't have area and energy I mean, Think what you do it. have for energy is click well you have two options you have the click drag into so you gotta do a solar panel. So you can click and drag with shift. That gives you a bunch of energy. Or you can also use alt shift or control shift? Yeah, control shift, and that'll build around a thing. So those are your two options. If you really want to surround metal extractors, control shift click. Or I think just control click might actually do the trick. 
But no, you have to shift choose left. exactly. You have to pick the start point, the end points, what's around what max and all this True. stuff. Where area max is just like click anywhere on the map, drag anywhere. It's so easy. It's so easy. It, I... It's maybe I should make an area energy widget just just for to see how it will go. I mean, I feel like that would end up with this giant field of solar plants that's completely impenetrable, which may not be the worst thing in the world. I mean, if it was like area surround mechs thing, where you have every mech that's around gets surrounded yeah. by solar panels, that might be an option. Yes, that, exactly. I think it would work. But at the same time, though, we do have... Well, actually, we're quite a bit of raiding coming from Siobhan over to the north. The Glaze getting rid of the welder, able to get rid of this entire expansion. That's six metal per second that what Potato Power does not have. Which, admittedly, they've only just now gotten their energy to the point that they can even take advantage of the metal per second that they've had before. And at the same time, the knights are doing their job pushing forward. Siobhan able to get a bit of reclaim off that as well, and that is going to be nice. 140 metal, not a huge amount, but still something, as Shivan is evening out the metal. And also this north expansion, entirely naked. What potato power is going to lose another 6 metal per second with nothing stopping them? Now, Kodachi's going to try, but these glaives are going to have a field day in the meantime. And the knight <gasps> versus an ogre. Did you see that, Hokumoko? The glaives just were idle. They completely died. They had they had the metal extractors available. They got the Kodachi, but at the cost of their life... Oh, there's two metal extractors that should not exist right now. What potato power manages to stop that? Oh, Schwan. I gotta say, I don't know what control groups they have. I really hope that they had those glaives on a control group, but clearly they weren't bouncing back to it, because that is so huge when you're in a backline raid situation. If you lose your units like that, you're going to end up just losing possibly the game. At the same time that they lost the glaives, uh, they've managed to kill an ogre for the cost of a knight. So True. not not everything is lost. It's yeah, 350 metal lost. versus 520 metal. So good job there. Value was found by Schwan. And more importantly, Schwan did manage to get what potatoes power what potatoes power's metal economy down way below their own. So while we didn't see much early expansion from Schwan, they are making up for it in the mid game. And making Gronins was the correct choice. Oh, of course. I mean, against against a bunch of ogres, riot units in general. That's the option. You have your riot units, go for skirmisher. Vehicles are no exception. Yeah, the raiders are faster, but the riot units, not so much. I really agree with the strategy. But now blitzes are coming from what potato power, and true. Like, but that's very what the are very for. fast counter game here. It's it's nice. That is zero okay. K. Yeah. And like, that is how Zero K is played. You gotta be really quick in the counters. It's a big reason I was... I was talking... I think it was Dime Friend. I was Dime Friend or Philly was mentioning why they don't use repeat build, and it's because they they can do that rapid counter play if they don't have the repeat build. However, that being said, the Glaive's not going for the Blitz, going inside for the Ogres, and that was a little bit less productive. Still, the Blitz as it is, is taking a lot of damage from the Beam Lasers, from the Lotus, from the... from the Ronin as well, and the Ogres as well taking the damage from the Ronin. But this push here, I mean... What potato power? They have the production going. They have 27 metal per second. Shivan is able to answer that with 40, but 40 with Cloaky is still tricky just the sheer amount of damage that the heavy tanks can do without dying. The sheer amount of efficiency they have. So many units died. Like, I, I don't think either player actually got a big um, advantage from this. Militarily, no. Positionally, yes. Shivan actually is going to likely lose their commander. They have a fully, a fairly upgraded no. commander, though. Lightning rifle and mm. concussion. Wow, well, they got a lot of stuff on that yeah. commander. So hey, that's actually the one thing that's keeping them in the game, and it's currently the one thing that's allowing them to push back. What potato power is push? But now what potato power has made up for Shivan's earlier harassment, and that might even be made up further if the Blitz has decided to go for more metal extractors. But it looks like they're going to be hauling, falling back, regrouping, and probably setting up for another big push. Oh, wow. Yeah, Shivan's commander doing a fine job there, making sure that they're not losing too much ground. And also, reclaim! Actually, 500 metal reclaim. Not a huge amount of reclaim, but still it's something. At this stage of the game, every little bit counts. As Shivan, obviously, they want to make sure they take that reclaim. They are on par with what potato power for economy right now, after that harassment. But again, are we seeing remix? As I mentioned before, remixing is the key skill of a really good player. We are indeed seeing that. We have Conjures coming in there, so Siobhan will be able to get their economy back going on top of the Reclaim once that Reclaim is exhausted. They are not going to be falling behind. In... Hmm. I mean, look I'm at the attrition, to too. 6,100. I got 1,000 metal extra attrition, which might turn around here, but 
A, everything's working out pretty well. I mean, we have the knights here that'll deal with the blitzes fairly well. The glaives is on top of that, and there's no ogres to help just get rid of the glaives. So overall, this is actually going potentially in Siobhan's favor again. The Southwest is the real question. What potato powers commander is under attack? It won't be going down too quickly, but it will be taking a bit of damage. There is a bit, there is a follow-up for some more glaze. And at the same time, though, the start is being built, but what potato power should be enough to stop it from being a major problem going forward. But hey, the salt of knights. That that group that group of knights is the main problem that'll be coming in. If the blitzes can't stop it, what potato power will lose their commander? They can flank it though. Oh, this is nice. Oh, yeah, the Blitzes are going along the south side of the map. They're not even trying to go to defend their commander. There's their confident that their commander can survive or they can survive without it, as instead going for the base, going for the back line, and there's not much stopping them as most of the forces are going after the commander from Siobhan. And what potato power, they can just walk away. Those knights are quite slow, it's worth noting. Unlike the Blitzes, which are having a just complete, well, Blitz. I mean, that's what they're doing. That's what they're named for. The lightning and the speed. Oof, this favorite fun. Definitely. It does, and honestly, don't know that what potato powers did lose their commander, and now the blitzes are down. What potato powers lack of a commander? While I do kind of agree with the way they pushed, and it does reduce the production from Shivan, they will be accessing metal pretty quickly. I mean, as soon as a worker gets over in the back here, Shivan will be able to get that production going. And not only that, Shivan has six knights that are going to be in a great position to push forward. They'll get rid of the Minotaur, their commander as well up front, because that's basically their frontline strider at this point. I mean, Shvan, this, they've got this chance. Push and win. This Martin chance, it's a full-fledged comeback. Absolutely. Um, if Shvan is able to take advantage of this, that's the key thing, though. Shvan needs to be confident they have that push. They, If they keep that confidence going and keep their armies going forward and keep get the production back going immediately, because that's actually a big problem right now. They've conjured right next to their base. Get that caretaker up. Just, just caretaker. Caretaker everywhere. Please. Yes, you've got the caretakers. We're good. Shvan can have this. Where's that commander, um, just, by the way? Uh, now sh they should make glaives. And just... Ex it's after you're making a break in the front, you, you need exploitation force. And glaives are the best exploitation force. I agree. Although, at the same time, there is an ogre coming up. That's exactly what Potato Power is expecting. So, while I, it's a good choice in general, <laughs> I think Shivan is actually just outplaying... They're just reading their opponent. They know exactly that... What potato power is going to go for that ogre? And they figure, no, 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 no. I'm going to stick with the knights. We're going to keep going with the heavy assault force. Maybe some, there are some glaives coming out later, but they want to make sure they have the knights to deal with the ogres when things when they come up, because I mean, Shaman knows those ogres are coming up. Hmm, and Shaman is continuing to upgrade the commander. Yeah, I mean, they're playing Rars. Like, I don't know if it's because of who they're fighting against. What potato power and Rar have fought before, and I feel like Rar is going to have an easier time there. But wow, Shvan is playing the Rar game with units. For those of you not familiar, Rar is a really old school player who's very fond of their commander, but has recently stopped using it as much. But they've used to upgrade the commander massively with this small supporting force. We're seeing Shvan do it with a massive supporting force, basically as a way of using the metal that they can't easily use until the caretakers are done rebuilding. I like that use of metal. It's working out. Their commander's not dead, and they have the knights to support it. As the Minotaurs are pushed back, the Ogres are trying to do what they can, but this is why I said knights are a great option here. The Ogres cannot do much. Unfortunately, what they can do is walk, is drive away just quickly enough that the knights cannot catch up to them. This was actually the... quite good. Yeah, Shaman, though, they I had their D-gun up. What could be really nice is... Oh, I think the comet's going down. I don't know, it's tricky. There, There's that glaive set coming in they were talking about before, or a glaive coming out before. And Shvan's able to lightning gun reasonably well. Ah, but here's the thing, that the ogres are going forward into the knights. That's the problem. The ogres are the main force to get rid of Shvan's commander. And with those down, those not kiting, Shvan still no. don't lose their commander. That is still the minute power of the Minotaurs. What potato power has the opening? But like you said, there is still the economy advantage that Shvan had for the longest time. They lose the stored metal, but they still manage to keep the rest of their army, and that leaves the Glaives able to move in. The Glaives not moving in, they're just totally scared of the Ogres and any possible follow-up Ogres. Not a bad thing to be scared of, but at this point, it's becoming almost impossible for Shaman to find any footing just because they're being scared. I think with Potato Power, should now just spam Welders. Just make a, a snowball of Welders and, and win the game. Just look at it so much. Oh, yeah. So much reclaim. All the reclaim. There's I mean, 5k reclaim here. 
And that is, like, that's the rest of the game, pretty much. And Siobhan actually also taking advantage of it. Siobhan apparently was reclaiming a fair bit earlier, and, oh, they can just get a bit more of that. Where was that 30 metal reclaim coming from? Because you're, I mean, what you're suggesting that we see what Potato Power do, that's what Siobhan is doing. They've got Conjure set up. Look at, they're trying to see if they can claim that reclaim field, though. If they manage to do that, they probably won the game. However, the Ogre's coming in here. Ooh, that's going to be a bit of a problem. I, I just had an epiphany. Okay, Welders what's it? are like puppies. Go on. You can send welders into a reclaim field, and then you make more welders. <laughs> yes, very good point. And yeah, they that's... multiply faster. And they, they really can do. also shoot. Well, okay, the one difference, though, is that welders stay alive after they shoot, which is why they're overpowered. Right. Well, I joke they're overpowered. <laughs> that is a joke, by the way. I don't want to make that unclear. I'm definitely joking when I say that they're overpowered. It's it just is, worth noting that they are actually quite strong. It is no joke. Well, there's uh, no joke. You, you should have seen that I've had a few games lately. Well, not only my games, but I've watched a few games where people just welder spammed. They haven't built a single unit that isn't a welder. And, you know, you make a few stingers and you just walk waltz into the enemy base. Fair enough, but as it is, though, it looks like the combination of Ronin and Nice is making this that Welder Spam might not, even, might not even work. Ogre Spam certainly isn't. The Ogre's being completely countered. We are assuming we switch over to Minotaurs, but I don't see that working either. Honestly, I'd like to see some Blitzes and Kodachis to deal with... Well, Blitzes primarily to deal with the, Ro the Ronin, but is that even going to happen in time? That's the real question. And this... Is that a Scythe? No, it's not a Scythe. I'm mishearing. That's Lightning Guns. I've apparently gone... Not deaf, but completely auditory hallucinations. Still, though, this is the thing. Welders getting torn apart by the knights. That's where I could... I like your idea, Hokomoko. It's just at this point, I think Schwan has the answer. Yeah, it seems like a third comeback. It's, I mean, it's really been back and forth, honestly. I mean, what potato power? They were doing well first, putting pushing Schwan back, and then Schwan managed to get themselves in the center of the map and just slowly but surely creep forward and then eventually have some position in the center, and then destroyed Wat Potato Power's commander in the top bottom left, destroying the entire expansion there, which Shvan is now reclaiming, and then managed to push in, but then lose their commander during their big push, as a bunch of ogres and, and minotaurs basically kiting out the, the knight, stopping anything from happening, but now it's turned around again, as Shvan has been able to wipe out that force of ogres and minotaurs, have the answer, have the counterforce needed to get through everything that Shvan's building, even the Welder Spam you were suggesting come up, and most of the Welder Spam is coming up for the the terraform are they building towers they're just trying to build a wall it does not matter because at this point the knights are able to tear apart those welders slowly but surely although i think slowly is more the operative word right now still on the, the back line support there's the, the knights just just look at this the welders are <laughs> i mean that's fair but the knights are going to be able to get rid of their caretakers and once the caretakers right. are done i mean what potato power already they have they're running with only really one caretaker necessary, but when this last caretaker goes, that's going to mean everything falls apart. What potato power throws in the towel? Schwan! Hell of a comeback. I mean, look at metal use. Just army, army value. Just oh. watch army value. Yeah, you can this see what like we're talking about. The back and forth. Like, yeah, absolutely what potato, marvelous game. What potato power taking the early advantage? Schwan trying to knock it back there a bit even, and Schwan's able to take out what potato power's commander, and then what potato power... Or Shvan gets a little bit cocky, loses their command and their entire frontline force to Wet Potato Power, who's able to keep the advantage until Shvan's able to stop Wet Potato Power's force from coming into their base. And ultimately, there were only two ogres coming into the base, and that was still taken out by the knights. So, very nice play. Like, Shvan in general, their unit choice, I was massively impressed by. Like, the use of knights in that situation, like I said, they seemed like they knew that ogres would be coming, and while the glaive is the obvious answer, they knew their opponents knew it was the obvious answer, so they went for the counter to the obvious answer's obvious answer, and it worked. The point is that knights, even even if they don't, like, they cannot entirely counter ogre, because ogre can kite knights. True. But knights can survive a long time. Like, the... the they can kill a lot, and they don't cost all that much, and they have a lot of health. So, so even if uh, the enemy unit kites you and and they give you damage, it's it's like a tank on legs. I think you may say, well, it's an assault unit. It 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 buys you time. That's that's I think what I mean. 
and it's one yeah, block exactly. of time exactly to 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 make this comeback. You I cannot mean, like... buy time with glaives. With glaives, it's either you kill stuff or you, you you're getting killed. And that's the thing we were seeing earlier. I do like the use of Ronan behind it, though. Like the fact is, you said knights are essentially a front line. They're they're keeping the the attention as an assault unit, and the Ronan have the range. They can deal with the ogres kiting. And I think that combination is a great choice for dealing with tanks as Cloaky. Yeah, I think so. And Ronan is actually also do a lot of damage. People That's fair. seem to forget this, but they they do a lot of damage and they are really, really cheap. Yeah, not even metal. I mean, they, I think people kind of forgot because they were really powerful and they got more expensive and I think they were nerfed slightly and then they've been kind of jumping around in balance. So it's a bit hard to know exactly how they're going to be. <laughs> but right now, yeah, they're in a, they seem to be in a reasonable position, not an overpower position, but a position where they are the answer to several questions. And it's worth knowing that. And they're useful. Oh, yeah, of course. But very anyway, th they are indeed very useful. But <laughs> that being that, we are going to be, I think, saying goodnight. Looks like this tournament is over. So at this point, we have Drone. They went 2-0 against Silencer because that one, there was that one group that had four people. It was best of threes all around. So Drone going 2-0 against Silencer. Zenfer beating Kane. We saw that with Sean as well beating Wet Potato Power in a very close game. Actually, how long was that? Very close 20-minute game. Gen back losing to McFascist, winning their group out, which actually McFascist didn't want to be streamed, but I mean, they're apparently playing pretty well. And then Pogadrew, it they got knocked out by Majora's Ass in the finals, although admittedly, Pogadrew, we had them in an earlier tournament. I'm glad they came back, and I'm glad that they came in and actually did quite well, got to the finals of their group. So, good job, you. Keep it up. Actually, good job, all of you. I'm glad everyone's signing up. Congratulations. I mean, just thank you for signing up. Thank you all for get participating in this tournament. Apologies for the small logistical issues that came up that made it a little bit difficult to make it as smooth, but those will be worked on, and then next tournament should be a lot smoother, a lot more, uh, like, just get everything through, and as well, thank you, Hokumoko, for joining me in casting. Thank you, everyone, for watching. My thank pleasure. you, Akinem. Thanks again. Thank you, Akinem, for hosting the tournament, despite the shade I was sort of kind of throwing on you. I really do appreciate that you are that you are doing this work. It's It's tough work, I know. So yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a reason I don't name. do it. I, I know how hard it is to do that and casting at the same time. So, yeah, thank you very much for doing that. <laughs> anyway, that is going to be it. So, again, thanks everyone for watching, and have a good night. Good night. <laughs>